budget policy statement and they make alterations and they actually alter it 4.2 billion shilling change for MPs 2 billion uh, which is definitely going to cause problems with the county governments because the legislators collective budgets include 2 billion shillings they say they will use to supervise county governments and there's also 108 million that the MPs will use to attend a regional games tournament mm -hmm. Now, this is half the amount going even to the education sector in terms of uh, recruitment of new teachers, which gets 8.6 billion. Uh, details of how the MPs plan to monitor counties have not been revealed. The move is definitely going to set them on a collision course with governors. Uh, a sim another headline to do with the same budget, not aligned to agenda. Uh, now, this is with regard to President Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, four-point agenda of affordable housing, food security, affordable health care, and revamping the manufacturing sector. The same committee says it appears the Treasury has not awarded money or put resources aside towards implementation of the four-point agenda. But 4.2 billion shillings going to MPs, that is a big one. That's huge for a country already struggling at a time when we should be uh, trying out austerity measures. Our debt levels are beyond what we can manage, surely. Uh, do you think this is justified? At the outset, let me firstly say that I do not belong to the Budget and Appropriation Committee. Uh, this is the Committee of Parliament, which is currently scrutinizing the budget from the executive, uh, awaiting budget uh, reading uh, in June. Um, secondly, uh, let, me, let me put it this way, that the Constitution came up with very clear separation of powers, that MPs must concentrate on the national agenda or national legislation. Of course, oversight of certain... Uh, government agencies uh, and staff. But when it comes to management of counties, either be it county assembly or county government, then that falls squarely. Firstly, we, the members of the county assembly, as the first dock of issues to do with the counties. Then the second stop of call is the Senate. So whatever cannot be handled, and that is why during the last regime, when many, many uh, assemblies, uh, you know, passed a motion of no confidence in their governors, the matter actually started from the assemblies, it went to the Senate, and lastly at a court of law. And the court of law pronounced itself very well that the first call is the assembly. The second call is the Senate. But again, it said... If somebody has been popularly elected by the people, you cannot subject such a person to 26 members of county assembly who could perhaps be disgruntled mm -hmm. out of the need for self-aggrandizement and send such a person home. They said, you cannot do that. But uh, it is overstepping um, our mandate if members of parliament would want to go down to the villages and start scrutinizing and asking questions relating to the management of counties. Yes. So I think that two billion shillings that has been allocated uh, to Parliament for, for that function must be scrapped. Yes, of course it, does, it, it doesn't really say whether it's a National yeah. Assembly or the Senate yeah. Yeah. that will be given this amount. You yeah. initially yeah. sought to be in the Senate, yeah. which uh, should uh, be handling matters to do with counties. Do you think it is justified to fund either the Senate or the National Assembly this much to supervise county governments? I think for once my brother and I here agree that uh, <laughs> on this particular subject, first and foremost, uh, one has not seen the details, so it's always good to make sure you have the, con you, you have the command of the details. Uh, you know, everything that we want to do in this country, in my opinion, must be square within the, d the confine of our constitution. If you look at chapter uh, 13, uh, it's at chapter, uh, chapter 10, no, 11 of our constitution, which is on devolution. Uh, clearly, the supervision of the governor, and here we are talking about expenditures and what have you, falls within the realm of the county assemblies. Members of parliament have no way of coming with a statement that they want to supervise 
county government unless this word member of parliament is confined to the senate and of course if it is a senate giving them the kind of money that you are talking about is horrendous, horrendously very very expensive it's a lot of money because if I, I in the last parliament senate was asking for about maybe a billion shillings but now this money that is, they are talking about that parliament will be oversighting the county government i think that is wrong uh, and that's an expenditure that really needs to be expurged from the budget as far as I'm concerned. Because the county assemblies are the ones who are supposed to carry out the mandate of one passing, uh, uh, one uh, uh, agreeing as to who is the cabinet or the county executive committee members. They are the ones that pass that. Yes. Two, they pass the budget. Three, they are the ones that uh, pass all the motions that are uh, to do with uh, any activity in that particular county. So I don't know how the National Assembly, or the for that matter, no, a Senate can have some, say, because yeah. the definition of the role of the Senate is to do matters counties. of the counties. Mm -hmm. But the National Assembly, it's end there is going to be very contagious mm -hmm. and therefore I believe that uh, that money is probably for other reasons now when you talk about giving them money for attending tournaments mm -hmm. <laughs> you know this is another very interesting animal that they, they are talking about uh, and I think what I would say to the finance and appropriation committee of parliament is please as you use your powers make sure you have studied the constitution thoroughly mm -hmm. because anything that is going to happen in this country it must be both constitutional and lawful okay. but do not use impunity or don't use your position to uh, do things just because you can do them because that is not uh, the way a nation ought to conduct itself okay the other, the other issue has to do with the, the fact that uh, the committee has raised concern that uh, President Huru Kenyatta's four-point agenda has not been catered for in the yeah. budget yeah. policy yeah. statement. Yeah. Uh, he only has five years. Yeah. Uh, he cannot. Uh, he does not enjoy the luxury of saying, "Okay, fine, we'll tackle it in the next financial year." He has to start immediately. Yes. Uh, that. Uh, what does it say about uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, intent? Uh, is he really uh, yeah. on it? Because if Treasury does not <laughs> actually take it seriously, mm -hmm. then probably these are just statements made to impress Kenyans. Well, thank you very much. In the last parliament, if, if you allow me to go back just a bit, there was a proposal to have some funds called supervisory funds by senators to oversight their counties. When that proposal or that bill came to the National Assembly, it was dropped at that point. Uh, I do not know whether this is the very thing that was killed in the last regime and is and now coming back. Okay. But, 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 you know, this has potential to spark lots of wars uh, at, the county uh, at the counties. Because you have the governor together with his executive, and then you have members of the county assembly. But here is a third person in the name of a senator with a budget coming to poke holes and uh, deliver very fundamental questions mm -hmm. to the assemblies and uh, and the counties that is potential danger to the success of devolution there will be wars from morning to evening three six five days a year so even as these budget proposals would mean so well but we have to have the hindsight of looking at the repercussions mm -hmm. of uh, strengthening the office of the Senate. Uh, I, I want to believe that that is not money is coming to um, na National Assembly. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to scrutinizing the usage of public funds at the county level, you have the Auditor General who will come up with every financial year's report. Yes. And if there are fundamental questions raised or audit queries that are raised, they are taken to the Senate and the Senate would then summon mm -hmm. the respective governors to answer to those audit queries. So they, they have a vantage position here in Nairobi to summon any governor from any quarter of this country. But if you are also going to duplicate this role 
by perhaps relegating that responsibility to a senator uh, and with all due respect I want to believe not all senators are accountants, not all senators are managers. People want them have political ambitions to, rec uh, to actually, to actually be governors. <laughs> yes. So uh, I, I think the, the, the Constitution did set out the office of the Auditor General to help oversight national yes. funds uh, of, on behalf of the Kenyan public. So I, I think we will, uh, we will try as much as we can mm -hmm. to moderate on uh, usage of these funds. Because again, at the end of the day, the Auditor General will also audit these two billion shillings that is meant to go to the Senate. Mm -hmm. You are giving them so much work that they may not be able to accomplish within one financial year. Uh, and you know the way the wastages have been in this country uh, definitely needs some very good uh, checkmating okay. of what is going on. Now on this other uh, you talked about the agenda four, mm -hmm. uh, w w w which talks about you know improving the manufacturing uh, sector to have a 15 percent GDP before 2022. Then you talk about food security, which is quite fundamental. This country is hungry and we need to do much more to improve on food production. And then you also talk about the affordable health care. Uh, you know, the, the situation of our health sector is worrying. Many people still die on the benches as they wait for the next uh, doctor. Uh, so we need to do so many uh, to improve on this. The only question that the audit, that the budget and appropriation committee raised is that having read all that budget proposal mm -hmm. from Treasury, none is aligned to the agenda form. And even if there is one, then it does not expressly say how we are going to reach there. Mm -hmm. They are just generalities. And certain times for one to handle economy properly, you have to be uh, specific on the areas that you'd want to, uh, to address. So I, I think uh, the Budget and Appropriation Committee will send those fundamental questions back to Treasury so that they can expound uh, clearly on that. But again, finally, if you talk about health, you talk about food production, you talk about uh, uh, the, the other third one, apart from manufacturing, all the three fall under the purview of devolution. Okay. So you ask yourself, is the government now willing to pump more money to counties so mm -hmm. that they can expand the scope of food production, or they want to circumvent the process and do it directly and to that's the people? The question. Uh, do you think that uh, President Lula <coughs> Kenyatta could mm -hmm. probably uh, be having a different kind of approach, not necessarily uh, by direct funding through uh, uh, the budget, that probably we are not seeing it. Yeah. Probably is going through uh, the uh, county governments. Well, I think it's a very fundamental question of uh, aligning the budget to expenditure of any kind. Uh, first of all, I don't believe necessarily that you need to come up with a, a, a budget of manufacturing, a budget for housing, a budget for health, and a budget for food, because we already have the right ministries. Uh, I think what I understand is that there is going to be major emphasis in making sure that there is a realization of the four agendas by the executive. The resources are within the budget. So, it's a question so of... without significantly changing the way we've been doing things, exactly, even yeah. from the last financial year, we'll still be able to achieve Yeah, yeah, you, you can still achieve because the money is still there. Because if we talk about the Minister of Agriculture, there is money there. Minister of Health, there is money there. Minister of this, there is money there. Now, it's a question of now saying, I want to achieve the manufacturing objective. And you make sure that that one is done. However... Uh, one of the critical, there are a number of critical imperatives as far as achievement of the four agendas are concerned. One of them is serious discipline. Discipline must be brought to bear in how we execute every activity of government. Because a lot of times you realize that we also have some resources that are normally returned to the treasury. Yes. Mm -hmm. But a certain activity has not happened. Yes. And therefore the money goes back to the treasury. Now that can be explained by the sloppiness of executing the mandate. It can also be explained that 
the people who are supposed to champion that cause, they're not clear what they're supposed to be done. So President Uri Kenyatta is not necessarily uh, tackling this by throwing more money into it. Not necessarily. Just no, 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 uh, the way no, government works. No, it is a question of bringing serious discipline mm -hmm. into the way we manage our uh, we manage our resources and focusing on those four key agendas. Because I believe he, according to him, and uh, 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 is that if we can be able to achieve. Uh, growth in these sectors or making sure that these sectors are performing, mm -hmm. then it has a ripple effect in making sure the whole country is really growing. Okay. Because a nation where, for example, uh, we have serious challenges of food in the 21st century, Fred, I mean, one cannot justify. Mm -hmm. How can you not feed your people? Okay. You know, that, that to me, it, 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 is a, it is a very, very serious Well, uh, our, our time matter. is up. Uh, Friend, because you already up past seven, uh, past seven. I'll give you uh, an opportunity to give you final remarks. There are two more uh, headlines that I wanted yes. us to yes. tackle, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. But now you could do that in your final yes. comments. Of course. <laughs> one, of course, is that Jubilee Party is saying that they are not part of that proposal to change the power structure to create a one-term president, seven years, okay. and a powerful prime minister. That is one. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, Edwin Sifuna takes over as a new... Uh, uh, substantive uh, Secretary General uh, of uh, ODM party and uh, they say Raila's party tells of NASA outfits uh, over 2022 plan as a Secretary General now mm -hmm. I think that's the first statement uh, he has made uh, those two plus any other thing as you make your final comments let's start with you Barajar. thank you you may have to call us back soon uh, to decipher <laughs> we will definitely do that. to decipher these issues well uh, what, what I'd wanted to comment about the the, the budget structure is that even as we move in to salvage the country uh, from those four major agendas by Jubilee, we also must guard against undermining the governors. Yes, it is true that there are line ministries responsible for various functions, but if you are going to work directly without in involving the respective county governors and not sending monies to them, and by the way, even as we speak, since the new regime came into place, since last August elections, no monies have been sent to the counties and the CDF monies have not been sent to constituencies. Mm -hmm. So if the government is going to then scatter around and send monies directly for those functions at the expense of CDF and county monies, then that is potential danger. So that must be uh, addressed. Uh, one senator, I think this week, said that the government must now refocus by abandoning all projects in opposition zones and only, only concentrating in uh, government zones. I think you heard that. That is a very unfortunate statement. Whether you have uh, stolen an election uh, or you are legitimately uh, in office, you must serve people equally. And for a leader, therefore, to make such a reckless statement is regrettable. Now, you talk, he talked about certain funds being returned to the Treasury when certain functions have not been carried out. Now, one thing that basically happens is financial years close in June, uh, to be very exact, 30, 30th of June. But you remember that monies are sent very late in the financial year that you cannot have to carry out all the procurement processes in good time because the procurement procedures are very elaborate. Uh, so that when the new financial year dawns, you've, you're not even through with the procurement procedures. So I think if monies will be available, they should be dispersed, uh, dispersed in good time so that those uh, people can benefit uh, from those monies. Uh, we also need to put monies at the judiciary to strengthen our justice system. However much you do for this country, and you do not pay attention to delivery of justice to those who seek for it, then you're doing nothing uh, to this country. So I think money should go there. Now, we have intra-coalition problems within NASA. Uh, we have had bigger issues than what you are uh, seeing right now. But I think our focus now as a coalition is not about 2022. Many, many things are going to happen in between. Uh, in fact, you may be surprised that sworn enemies at the moment will be very good buddies in 2022. In 2022. So our focus now should be about electoral justice. If there are certain gaps 
that must be filled within IEBC or even the entire electoral merchandise. And that's what this uh, ODM is telling the other parties. Focus that is on electoral justice, yes. not on 2020. Otherwise, we are falling into the trap of Jubilee, which okay. would want us yeah. to de be fragmented. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they run away with all the ills mm -hmm. perpetuating in this country. Okay, finally, but I, can well, I want to deal with the three issues that you talked about the constitution, the proposed amendment of the constitution, Sifuna, and also the inter party or intra party challenges that are there in uh, NASA. First, I want to invite Kenyans to appreciate that the amendment of this constitution it will have to be an all inclusive activity. And why do I say that? I say that because having uh, seized the opportunity to look through Article 255, 256 and 257, I want to say this in public. No one party today can effect the amendment of the Constitution mm -hmm. without others. The way the structure of those three articles are is such that we will need a national consensus. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Without going to the merit of what is supposed to be proposed. Mm -hmm. Now, with respect to Sipuna, that is uh, usually a continuation of what ODM, how, or they don't elect uh, their leaders. They are anointed <laughs> by the chief. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Sipuna is enjoying the anointment of his uh, sector leadership of the ODM. But has any other party even carried out elections in Kenya? Well, since you only asked uh, yeah, about okay. Sifuna, I'm only concentrating on Sifuna. <laughs> All right? So <laughs> that is a fact. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, as long as he enjoys the goodwill of uh, Baba, mm -hmm. then he will run the office of the Secretary General. But he must always appreciate that it is the Secretary General of Raira. Not even ODM, or the, or not the even ODM or the party. <laughs> now, with respect to the the last issue that uh, you raised of uh, the challenges that are there within NASA, it was expected because the ODM is the largest party. I think it has got 68 members of parliament. Uh, Kalonzo has got 14. Mdavadi has got I don't know eight. Eight. Tangula has got one. I don't know how many. Even if you add all of them, uh, I mean, uh, let's face it, they must accept the supremacy of ODM. Within the coalition. If you don't accept the supremacy of ODM, walk out. And that is as simple as that. That is democracy. Because democracy is the rule by the majority. Uh -huh. And therefore, even when you are talking about NASA, the engagement between and within NASA, Raira takes the prominence. And that will have to continue. Now, if you don't accept that the authority of NASA is do domesticated at Raira, the head of the largest party, then walk off. And let me also tell you, and I hate to hazard this guess, Raira will still be a candidate in 2022. Irrespective of the a, uh, MOU or the agreement <laughs> that was entered into between Caloso, um, Davadi, and, that's your and Tangura. That is my prophet. <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Karanja Kabagi, lawyer, businessman, and now prophet. Says, uh, <laughs> Odinga will definitely be on the, on the ballot come 2022. Uh, thank you so much, Jared Okello, MP Nyando, helping us look at the headlines this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Ali uh, Alimandri is in the house, uh, be cooking up some uh, juicy breakfast. So do stand by for that. Willis Raburu is on standby to do the eating, of course. Uh, <laughs> something else coming up on the show. Remember, Power Breakfast is a hashtag choose up until 9 a.m. We are still looking at things happening in Nyeri. Jimmy Wanjigi, the businessman, is expected to be appearing before court. We'll be keeping, at, uh, keeping tabs on happenings there as well. My name is Fred Indimuli. Good morning.